Hello everyone, welcome to This Day. It is Monday, November 20th. I'm Michael Taylor. How's your day going so far? We got the travel going on. I was up at 4.45 this morning, taking my daughter to John Wayne Airport for our first thing in the morning flight. And so it was crazy up there, but I'm glad I didn't have to go to LAX. Uh, hope you have some great travel plans. Hope you are gonna have some fun weeks uh, if you're around. We got some great shows for you this week too. So let's start talking about them. Uh, we have Grammy Award winning artist, Diane Shore. She's gonna be talking with us about a show she has coming up at the Irvine Barkley. So stay tuned for that. Great conversation we're gonna have with her. And California Club has lots of changes going on within the club and it's a couple of shows they wanna talk to us about. So make sure, uh, stay tuned for that. They got some great shows coming in December and and January. Speaking of shows, we've got a light show to tell you about. How about a Christmas tree lighting and toy drive? It's going to be uh, the village's annual holiday tree lighting and toy drive coming up Saturday, December 2nd over at Clubhouse One at 6 p.m. Make sure you bring an unwrapped children's gift for that and it's a great event, great fun for everybody. So go out there, enjoy some cocoa, watch the tree lighting. Hopefully it'll be nice temperatures as well by the time we get to there. Speaking of temperatures, let's take a look outside. We're going to have some warm ones. As you can see, the tree is blowing out there, and it's going to be a warm uh, Santa Ana-ish day. We got sun and wind today, 76, maybe even a little higher, maybe getting up to the upper 70s uh, today. Uh, tomorrow, the wind should die down, maybe a little bit breezy, but mostly sunny again. That's going to be our warmest day of the week. And we always get after the storms, we always get some Santa Ana, so this is the time of year for that. Then we start a slow cooling trend. As we head towards Thursday, Thanksgiving, that should be pretty nice. So enjoy that day. A little partly cloudy in 70s all through the weekend. Let's take a look at our sunrise and sunset. I saw the sunrise today. I'm here to tell you it was a nice one. Sunrise was 627 a.m. Sunset 445. And that photo there is from Jules Anderson. And she was or they were over in uh, Hawaii. And let me let me make a deal with Jules. Jules goes to Galapagos. Jules goes all over the world, Hawaii. Uh, Jules, you can come in and host the show for a week, and I'm going to take one of your vacations. We're going to trade uh, our, our lives for just for a week because I'm kind of a little jealous of all the places Jules gets to go to. All right, if you want to send us a picture, I don't think Jules is going to take me up on that offer, by the way, but uh, I'll have to talk to my boss. If you want to send us a picture of the places you've been, your pets, anything like that, Laguna Woods Village TV at gmail.com. Send us those pictures, those great vacation shots. Lots of folks going on vacation this time of year. Make sure you put your name in there, where you took the picture, and send it to us horizontally if you can when you take the picture. Thank you very much. Hey, no meetings today. Good news there. And when we come back, we'll be talking to Diane Shore. Village Television presents Friday Films, only on Village Television. Fridays at 2 and 6 p.m. Foreign films, dramas, and comedies. Award-winning films, romance and mystery. Independent films. Every Friday, only on Village Television. Legendary, Grammy Award winning, Diane Shore, pianist to our program to this day. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, sure. Sure. Oh, let's let's talk a little bit about, you have a quick, uh, real quick, and we're going to talk about a lot of your history, a lot of your life here, but I want to talk about your show coming up. It's Diane Shore at 70. That's a big number. Oh, no joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I've got a good group. Uh, Ernie Watts is going to be on sax. And um, Kai Palmer is going to be on trumpet, and then uh, Bruce Lett will be on bass, and Kendall K will be on drums. So there'll be a four, the four of us. So now, why did you go with seventy? Why why put that out there in terms of um, like here I am, I'm seventy. Is it kind of like you're owning it, or like hey, this is uh, this is a storied career? I want to make people sure they understand that. Yeah, that's part of the reason because. 
uh, January 4th, it'll be 60 years that I've had in show business. So um, from age 10, so I figured 70 is a landmark for me. I mean, I, I uh, performed for Ray Charles when he turned 70 at the House of Blues in LA and, wow. and, uh, and, and so on. And I thought, well, I might as well do something kind of cool you know, do some shows to just let people know that I've been in this business for a while, that I'm still here. And you, like you said, you started as a kid I, and you'd kind of, you kind of self-taught at the piano. Then you move on to a, a you know, a, a pretty prestigious school for a while and kind of learn what, what brought, what, do you know, remember what drew you to the piano in the first place? Well, one of the things that did is the fact that we had one and, uh, <laughs> I know that I don't mean for that to sound simple, but um, we had a piano at the time. My great aunt had an organ, uh, one of those B3s at the time, and I learned how to play that and started at age three playing piano and and singing at age two or doing my best to emulate Dinah Washington anyway. And so, um, but anyway, I'm actually sitting at a piano, so I figured that might be kind of cool to, you know, to do, to do actually do this from. They so. figure it out. So what kind of training did you get that changed you in terms of I self-taught, learning by ear and doing all those things. And when you went on and you went to the formal training that you got, how did that kind of expand your horizons? I had um, music lessons from when I was seven until I turned 10 or so. Uh, uh, from a teacher who was also blind at the, and I was at the state school for the blind and learned the rudimentaries of playing, um, you know, learning that, for instance, this is C and I learned uh, the chord structures of that key and then uh, the key of G where there are three flats, C has two flats above it. So it kind of gave me a really good inkling of, um, you know, those are the home keys and then I can just uh -huh. go from there. And okay. it's kind of like learning how to type, you know, because you have your home row and, and all that. You remember the first song you ever played? Yeah, Jesus Loves Me in Three Fingers, No Thumbs. Um, can, I, can, yeah. I dare, can I dare ask you to play a little teeny bit of that? Let's see if I can still... <laughs> Anyway, that's that's how I <laughs> <laughs> the, the early the early days, the early beginnings. And then you you go on, you're performing with all these amazing artists. And then the 80s really kind of hits for you. That's when you're you hit the Grammys. And that's when I remember first hearing your name, Diane Shore, uh, in, in the jazz world and all of those things and hearing some of your albums is what was that like to suddenly go from and I wouldn't I don't want to say suddenly, like, oh, you were this overnight success. You were doing this since you were a kid. Oh, but to go from you know to what? go to that that kind of fame and, and notoriety. Yeah, the the overnight success is a myth. I don't think that anybody really you know, there's a long, a long slog to go through. And yeah, it was, it was uh, really quite a, in some ways it was a surprise, but I still kept doing gigs at clubs and, you know, all of that, but winning the first Grammy and actually being able to be on stage for the pre-telecast was pretty cool. So, mm -hmm. yeah. What's, what's, in, in your career trajectory that's been going on for decades, like we've said, uh, what has been the maybe the most rewarding or what keeps you coming back? You've been doing this a long time. The love of the music keeps me coming back. And the the actually the love fest that I have with the audience as well, I think helps a lot. What's it like performing? What was it like performing the first time you were ever in front of an audience and you got that the, the response? It, what, what was that like for you? Well, it was uh, it was actually captured on an album, um, the first song that I ever did. Um, the album was called Some Other Time, and I think the twelfth track is my version of September in the in the rain with uh, drums and piano, uh, no bass. And uh, and of course, 
that was pretty thrilling. It was at the Holiday Inn in Tacoma. Okay. Washington is when that was first done. And I, I, we talk a lot about your piano work, but I mean, you're an amazing three and a half octave singer. And, and when did you realize that you had the vocal range that you and you had this pitch perfect ability to hit those notes? Well, I think I've always kind of known it, uh, that I could, could do it. And uh, I don't know, I can't really name, name a date and time. It just, right. just, it's been a part of me. And who, were, who, when you were growing up, who were the who were the artists that you? I know you. I I, I not seen you know, but I want the folks to know at home. Who are the artists that you just listened to and tried to emulate and 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 trying to like be and, and knew you wanted to be a part of that that genre? Well, I named Dinah Washington a couple of minutes ago, right. and then um, Sarah Vaughn was a big influence, and uh, I listened to a lot of the female singers when I was a kid. And everybody from. Uh, well, I did listen to Ella Fitzgerald, but that came a little bit later. But mm -hmm. Sarah Vaughn, Dinah Washington, Kay Starr, Patty Page, um, Edie Gourmet, Barbara Streisand, of course, Nancy Wilson, who was a very dear friend of mine. Yeah, those those type of people. Recently, uh, Barbara's actually, Barbara Streisand is doing a tour with her new book and kind of and, and doing all these things. And I, I thought to myself when I was hearing, watching one of her interviews, what's there left to say or what's there left to put out there? Do you sometimes feel like, you know, what do I have left to kind of say? I'm 70, I, I've done it all. And what keeps you going? I just love to, I just love to tour. That's, I mean, as long as I can, um, you know, we'll see what this year and the next spring. Mm -hmm. So so what should, what should folks expect when they see you over there by Barkley? And I, you named a lot of your um, a lot of your accompanists uh, on this one. What, what's the, what is going to be the standards that people are used to? Anything anything new you've kind of thrown into the mix? Um, basically the the songs that I've known for. Um, it's going to be more concentrated on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in your career, you know, I'm, I'm sure when you were young, a lot of people told you what you needed to do, or a lot of people tried to give you that advice. Now we have a tour that's called, you know, at 70. <laughs> so have you, what have you, how's your decision-making, how's yours, just how, how you put it together a show, how's that changed for you over the years? Have you, you've become more of your own person in that world? I think my, I think I've pretty much become in a lot of ways, my own, my own person. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, there's a song that's called Music Is My Life um, by the late Carol Coates. He wrote it. He died just recently. And um, but it's it's a great tune. It's from the album of the same name. And, you know. The, the like the second passage is uh, I call my guys, we change the show. They're not surprised for a well they know what you spend on it. Um, that's just one of the passages of that particular tune. I, I just love it a lot. And of course, I called Carol. His name was Carol Coates. And I called him Coco. And uh, we were very dear friends for a lot of years. I believe he was 93 when he passed, 93 or 94. Oh. And uh, yeah. So anyway, that's one of the tunes we'll be doing. And We'll be doing what a difference a day makes. That's what I learned from, you know, Dinah Washington and a lot of a lot of great stuff. Beautiful stuff. Is there any one song that, I mean, like you said, Dinah Washington was obviously your biggest influence. So is there any one song that you've just never dropped out of the repertoire? You've said this is one I'm going to carry with me for the rest of my life. Oh. Hmm. Oh, I don't know. I, I I'm not sure about what i've there have been tunes that i've taken out but um deedles blues has been pretty much a staple mm -hmm. uh, during a show i can't remember if we're doing it this time but okay well i will tell you this as we wrap up your diane sure at 70 you're going to be evening of songs and stories so a lot more of this when you got see her at the irvine barkley and it's going to be coming up on thursday november 30th at 8 p.m Diane sure thank you so much for joining us on this day Oh, Michael, thank you for having me. I hope that 
everything, you know, I, I hope everything worked out. I mean, television wise, because I'm I'm here at the desert deedle pad, as I call it. And you can see a, a portrait behind me and uh, maybe I don't know what you can see or what you can't. See some beautiful blinds and the side of a portrait and you, which is in the center of the picture, which is most important for us. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. And I, it's been the last time I was at the uh, the Barclay Theater was uh, on January 10th of uh, 2020. So it's it's been a while, but I'm really looking forward to coming back. And I appreciate the fact that I can come back. I love I that. Looking, I know they're looking forward to having you. It's going to be a great show. Wonderful. Thank you so much. To say how much I care. I do, I do, I do. I just called to say. Well, if you're looking for a good night of uh, food, fun, dinner, dancing, music, California Club is a great place to start. Joining me from the California Club, I want to welcome our guest, uh, Carol Romero and Louis Bulowitz. Thanks for joining us, guys. You're welcome. So you guys have uh, like kind that. of revamped the club a little bit, right? Tell me a little bit of what, what you're doing in terms of like a dress code and the kind of the things you guys are bringing to the club. And you're, the, you're our new president, so let's start here. I will start. <laughs> um, I joined this club about eight and a half years ago, and it was something really beautiful and special. The ladies dressed in their gowns, the men wore their tuxes and the, the suits, and it was all ballroom dancing. But times change, it's eight years later. Um, when we want to, if we want to survive, we have to not only respect the older people whose shoulders we built this club on, but we have to attract the younger ones. And the younger people, 70 and under, Grew. Oh, I can't believe I called them so the younger. All oh, those youth. <laughs> yeah, the kids. The kids. The kids here grew up in an era that was so different than ours. Mm -hmm. um, those of us that are 75, 85, older, we had different music, different way of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, the younger people don't want to put on a suit. They, right. The guys don't want a sport coat, or if they do, no, no tie. Mm -hmm. They never went ballroom dancing. So we either go downhill or we reinvent um, ourselves so that we appeal to the younger ones and still bridge that gap so that we appeal to the older ones. So, so we're making some radical changes. Um, the first one's gonna be our dress code, okay? We are going to be dressy casual, which means nice slacks, nice shirt for men. Um, we won't be allowing people in, we don't want people coming, let's say that way, in warm-ups, um, you know, we'll... No Lululemons. They may anyway, or flip-flops. We just want to have it look nice, and, and so we're going to request that people, you know, stay with our dress code. But if some people want to wear something dressier, they're welcome to. Right. Okay? We're not going to, we're not going to turn anybody away, and, we're, and, you know, we want to appeal to everybody, and whatever they like, that'll work. So it's a business casual kind of thing, and up. Exactly. And up, and up. You can make it dress here, you just can't go the other way. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. Um, so we got some good shows coming up. Talk about our December show. You got the big holiday show coming up? Who wants okay. to talk about that? Yeah, please do. Uh, well, we are <laughs> very happy to sponsor at the Performing Arts Center uh, the music of Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. And this is not an impersonator of Stevie Wonder. This is a tribute to the prolific, beautiful music he wrote, mm -hmm. and it was prolific. Oh, yeah. And all of his music carried this theme of peace and love and understanding and inspiration. So we have a very inspirational group to bring us this music. It's a group of 10 highly talented performance, performers, and they are aptly called Higher Ground. Okay. And uh, Stevie Wonder actually wrote the song, Higher Ground. Sure, absolutely. So they are going to be bringing us this music that night, and it will be inspiring and uplifting. Mm -hmm. And how do you guys come around the, the groups that you find, like the Stevie Wonder and the other acts you bring in? 
How do we what? How do you find them? Where do you where do you go? Do you do, uh, this, well, do they say that is you? due to our very talented <laughs> uh, committee duo? We have we have a couple of people who are excellent in what they do, and they'll spend hours on YouTube looking at different groups. They'll okay. come up with an idea of who they'd like to hire, and then they'll listen to different ones that perform mm -hmm. um, before they hire them. And uh, for the people that we do, Sharon and Dave, they're very good at what they do. You guys, bring, you guys bring people back that you hey, these guys were great, they're coming back. Do you have kind of, kind of some regulars no, in, in the club? we try to have at least a couple of years um, in between. Uh -huh. um, we want to make sure we have great attendance and we don't want someone to say, well, we saw them last year. Oh, okay. So, yeah. And not only that, there's so much entertainment out there that sure. we don't have to do that. <laughs> um, sometimes we want to because they're so good, but you know, we put it out sometime in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to say about this show that there's still time to get tickets. Absolutely. And there are seats still available at the pack. It's December 2nd. Okay. So I really want to encourage people to go. This is going to be a beautiful evening. Mm -hmm. And dinner and, and the whole shebang? Not oh. that. Not this <laughs> That's night. just the show, this right? The, there. This is, this is, at, the is pack. at the pack. Right, that's the pack. The dinner is our monthly ones. And okay. speaking of the dinner, um, we have brought in a lady named Jan Lambert who has a big big background in catering for hotel, you know, run by hotels and, and um, she's taking over that position and so she's working with our caterer okay. to work on improvement um, in, the, in, the, in the presentation and the, in the, uh, we're, we're working on improvement in food as well and, and um, so we're going to be changing a lot of things, not just mm -hmm. the dress we're going to So you're just kind of going down the whole list of here's what we're doing, let's take a fresh look at everything in, in terms well, of what can well, we revamp. as lovely Carol has said, we've got Stevie Wonder coming and you know, two or three years ago it would have been Frank Sinatra. Right. Okay. okay so <laughs> that, that's the change. We know that those are, you might classify as olders, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're ones that have been here a long time, they're going to love Stevie Wonder, Sure. and the younger people know who he is and will come to that too. So. Yeah, and you know, those, those music, those artists coexist at the same time. Frank was still yeah. putting out music during the Stevie Wonder and the Beatles era and all that kind of thing too, so it's not as though uh, it's, it's rarefied air for them. Well, who's the Stevie Wonder character? I you know. know. <laughs> and you mentioned the Beatles, and actually Stevie Wonder even wrote for the Beatles, and mm -hmm. Michael Jackson, I don't think many people know that. No, I didn't know the Beatles really. Okay, Michael Jackson. Not many here. songs, but <laughs> wow. he did. Very interesting, very interesting. And you guys have a January show coming up too, right? We do. And uh, we had a great Jimmy Buffett beach party. Mm -hmm. Party of all parties. <laughs> but that had to be rescheduled. So, um, all, so one thing, all of the people who registered for January, we've mm -hmm. moved all their um, registrations to the April 23rd okay. event. So they need to just let us know if they can't do that. <laughs> so coming you have the up lifetime then, rocker band coming in, right? Yes, coming <laughs> up on um, January 23rd. I am so excited for this group because I love classic rock, it's soft rock, and this is what they do. They have a song list of about 500 in their repertoire. Like a jukebox. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. With so many artists, all the artists we love. Oh, and if people love to dance, they will want to be here this evening. Because um, this band is our dance band, and it's also our entertainment segment. Mm -hmm. So people can dance all night long, and they will want to, to mm -hmm. this music. I'm really excited about yeah. that. And this will be kind of the first look at the revamped kind of the food and the dress code and everything. This will be kind of your rolling out of this? Well, yes, and this is all possible because there are other clubs and other boards around that do a really good job. And many of the boards that I know have four or five really dynamic people that, that really take charge. Um, when I joined and I went to the first meeting, I was in awe that this is a club where every single person on the board is dynamic. They are, you don't have to tell them what to do, um, whether it's the publicity, whatever, they just take charge and they run with it, and it's really unusual and very exciting. And the other thing is when I was at the meeting, everybody had one thing in mind. What's the best thing we can do for the people who are members of our club? 
Well, that, that's it wasn't great, about egos. It wasn't about anything else. That's a great place to start from, right? Yeah. Well, we've got the December show. We've got the January show. Folks can still get tickets to both. Thank you both very much for coming in from the California Club. I want to thank again Louie and Carol. It's thank our you. pleasure. It's our pleasure. Thanks a lot. When okay. we come back, we're going to take a look at the Monday movie. Stay with us. A will is not enough to avoid probate. However, if you have a will, a trust, a complete estate plan, then you will avoid probate. We encourage you to come meet with us. It's complimentary. We'll review the estate plan, make sure that it's current, covers all of your assets, and you're actually protected. I'd like to personally thank LS Carlson Law for all my family's estate planning needs. I highly recommend them to everyone. Hi, I'm Linda Honey. I'd be happy to help you and your family. Please call us today. All great healthcare organizations care, but the best dare to reach higher. At Hogue, we lead with life-saving clinical trials and advanced therapies. Our world-renowned specialists innovate with state-of-the-art technologies like virtual reality and robotics. Hogue is the number one hospital in Orange County four years in a row. Now more than ever, your healthcare choices matter. Choose Hogue. The Salvation Army Orange County is committed to building hope in people's lives rather than just more shelters. The Center of Hope, a comprehensive homeless care solution, combines a 325-bed emergency shelter, 72 permanent supportive housing apartments, on-site medical, dental, vision, and mental health care, and an award-winning drug and alcohol rehabilitation center. Donate today to transform lives, create safer neighborhoods, and provide an opportunity to end chronic homelessness in Orange County. We've got a really fun movie for you this Monday. I just saw this movie yesterday for the first time. It was really fun. It's Barbie with Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling. It's brought to us by Providence Mission Hospital with the subtitles at 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. without the subtitles. It's a fun romp. Uh, it's a fantasy comedy, of course. Barbie and Ken take this journey of self-discovery following this existential crisis that Barbie has. And both enter the real world and things get real complicated. It is a fun movie. You even get to see Ryan Gosling sing a, a theme song there, so that's a fun one too. Let's take a look at our weather before we head out for the day. It is going to be windy and warm today, probably getting close to 80 degrees today. Uh, tomorrow for sure in the 80s and mostly sunny, and then we start a cooling trend for the rest of the week as we head towards Thanksgiving and the holiday weekend. And Black Friday, we want to have nice temperatures on Black Friday when we're shopping out there for sure. That's going to do it for this edition of this day. On Monday, we want to, or on Tuesday rather, Lutheran Church of the Cross and Village Breeze update. We're going to talk to those folks. And that'll be Bobby and hosting the show. That's going to do it for me. I'm Michael Taylor. For all of us here at Village Television, we hope you make this day a great one. is made for work, play, and adventure. All the things that make life amazing. But when pain gets in the way, turn to Hogue Orthopedic Institute to get you back to doing the things you love. At Hogue Orthopedic Institute, we're experts at getting you out of pain and back to golf, running, or yoga. Whatever makes you, you.